Astrolabe. What is that? On the floor was an ornate device for navigating across the stars. Navigating across the stars. Da 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 do. I got the weird device. Mosaics. The floor of the observatory was decorated with the 64 signs of the zodiac. 64? That's a lot. They were all here. The celestial parsnip, the cow of heaven, <laughs> cow of the heaven. knotted string, even Okjok the salesman. Okjok the salesman. <laughs> Fascinating though they were, I couldn't do anything to the mosaics with my bare hands. Does that mean I have to use something in my inventory combined with my bare hands? Maybe this map. Two conquerors had given me a star map that was supposed to lead to the jewel he was looking for. If I combine this with the mosaics... I looked at the star map and back to the mosaics. The map seemed to include a constellation. All I had to do was find out which one and tell the golem to move the telescope to look at it. Well, it was a plan of sorts. It's a good start, man. We're in an observatory, we have a map, we have mosaics, Gahuli, the vase of tulips, <laughs> and we have that. I didn't know anything about Gahuli, the vase of tulips, apart from the fact that it didn't look at all like a vase. It looked more like some careless sky god had spilt something. <laughs> a vase of tulips. Let's inspect all of these. The celestial parsnip. The Celestial Parsnip was one of the most famous constellations. By drawing a line across its length, you could find Hubaris, the hub star, which used to lie exactly over Kari Celesti at the hub of the world, until two drunken thunder gods staggered back to Dun Manifest in drunk one night and knocked it off course. Damn you, gods, and your drunken ways. As a result of this incident, three traveling salesmen mistook Hubaris for an omen and arrived at a stable in Sirit, trying to sell their cheap perfumes and embalming oils. Life's like that. The Flying Moose, my birth sign. Apparently it was a rocky sign, but I didn't know why. The Flying Moose, it's a rocky sign. Yeah, that, that one's a head-scratcher. The double-headed kangaroo was the astrological birth sign of the coward. It had that characteristic quality of most constellations in that it looked nothing like what its name suggested. Let me guess, Nobby's birth sign. What it most resembled was a ball of string, and it was hence easily confused with the knotted string, which was the birth sign of the dismally confused. The small boring group of faint stars. <laughs> well, who named this one? The small, boring group of faint stars was the least remarkable of all the constellations. And I think it's the one we're looking for. Yep, it kinda looks like it. I suppose the small, boring group of faint stars might have been on the map, but if they were, they'd been drawn much brighter than they really were. Swing the telescope around to face the small, boring group of faint stars. Cool, so that's done. Now I just use the telescope. Now let's look around a little bit more. The golem didn't say much. They normally didn't. It wasn't their way. Yeah. I could tell the golem what to do, but beyond that there wasn't much I could do. The huge telescope was too large to be moved by hand, so a nearby golem operated the cranks. The stars seemed to be pointing at the Selachi Mausoleum. Aha! If the map was right, the jewel was somewhere inside. As we suspected. So, the mausoleum... How do I get out of here? There we go. The observatory. To the mausoleum, then. Anything going on in my office? I, I get the sense that something's gonna happen there. Hmm, not yet.
Well, I can't go down into the actual cemetery part, but I can still look at this, at the sky. The central atrium of the mausoleum opened up so that you could see the sky. I guess on some nights it must have been quite a beautiful sight. But this wasn't one of those nights. What are you talking about? It's actually quite pretty. But let's put the map that we got. The stars were definitely pointing at the mausoleum, but I couldn't just judge by eye exactly where they were pointing. Hmm. I have to use... this thing. The astrolabe was a carefully constructed tool for navigating the heavens. I suppose it could be useful if I got lost in the city and wanted to work out which way was hubwards. Hubwards. What if I point this at the sky? Yes. I used the astrolabe to see exactly where Two Conquer's map pointed. They seem to be indicating a grotesque in the entrance chamber. Bingo! Poor thing, being called a grotesque. It's actually quite alright. I don't know who thought it was tasteful to make carved statues that were part human and part mythical beast, but frankly I thought they looked awful. Dude, you met gargoyles with feelings. Maybe this one has feelings too. I searched the grotesque carefully and concluded that it was a cover stone for something underground. Like a music scene? I pushed it, opening up the crypt below. The stale air told me that this chamber hadn't been visited in hundreds of years. In the gloom, I could make out a single sarcophagus. The sarcophagus didn't look like any recent design. In fact, I was surprised to see one in Ankh-Morpork at all. It must have been imported from somewhere. The lid of the sarcophagus was sealed shut. On the sarcophagus was a circular indentation with a square peg coming out of it. I couldn't move the peg with my hands. But I have a certain propeller shaped device that might work in there. Maybe. Let's try. The design of the amulet was oh. completely different to the design of the sarcophagus. Well, never mind then. Let's see what else we have in our fun bag. Falcon? I didn't think that had... I had to try and waste less time trying to make obvious connections. Uh, what, but, uh, uh, excuse you. Maybe the coin? It's the only thing with a hole in the middle. Mundy's coin fitted the indentation perfectly. And with it, I could easily turn the pen. There was a faint click, and the sarcophagus opened. Inside the sarcophagus was a suit of armor, grasping a glowing gem that could only be the radiant trapezohedron. I wasn't expecting the armor to burst into life, though. Thanks a lot. Four hundred years I wait for you to come and let me out. And the first thing you do is cut my arm off. You startled me. It'll take ages to sew back on. I'm sorry. I just sort of acted reflexively. So you instinctively cut the arm off people you meet? Not often. If they come bursting out of a coffin, yes! Yeah, in that case, yes. It's a sarcophagus. A very nice sarcophagus. Donated to the Order by some nice people. In Jelly Baby. <laughs> Jelly Baby. <laughs> and you're... 
vitally impaired. Vitally impaired. <laughs> He's a zombie. Vitally impaired? What's that supposed to mean? Call a spade a spade. I'm a zombie. Right. If that's the way you want it, I need that jewel. I'm sure you do. But first, you must answer the riddle and prove your worth. The riddle? Indeed. Are you ready, mortal? This is ridiculous. I'm in a real hurry and I need that jewel. Oh, please. Oh, okay. I've been here for 400 years. Please let me ask the riddle. Make it fast. All right. What is... Uh, oh, bugger. I've forgotten it. Is that the riddle? <laughs> you've forgotten it? 400 years and you forgot the thing that you were supposed to ask. Well, it has been 400 years. You see how good your memory is after four centuries. Especially when you got mice. Can I have the jewel or not? No. I have to ask. The riddle. How else am I going to know if you're a follower of the dark cults? Let me get this straight. You can tell if I'm a follower of the dark cults by whether or not I can answer a riddle. It's pretty ridiculous. Absolutely. So how does that work then? Are the forces of darkness incapable of answering riddles? Oh, I'm sure the gods would never allow the unworthy to gain control of this. Oh, I wouldn't rely that much on the gods. Interesting theory. Look, I need that jewel and you're just going to have to find a way to give it to me. The Order decided that we'd ask a riddle to determine the worthiness of anyone petitioning for the trapezohedron. And you didn't write it down anywhere? I have to ask a riddle. So just ask any kind of riddle. You mentioned the order. Yes. The order of the sacred tulip. You must have heard of us. Let me guess. You went out on rampaging crusades across other people's nations with some spurious religious purpose. And came back having stolen a fortune from so-called inferior nations and then started getting involved in ecclesiastical politics on the proceeds. Hmm? Those were the days. Hmm? Yep. You got it in one. And the order buried you with the trapezohedron. That's right. They needed a guardian. And I volunteered. You volunteered to be buried with the jewel for hundreds of years? I thought it'd look good on my record. Well, aren't you the employee of four centuries? Can't you just make a riddle up? Well, there was one specific riddle I was supposed to be asking. But since you can't remember it, you need a new plan. Why not just make one up?
All right. What is... Um... Um... No. Sorry. I can't do it. My mind's a blank. You know what it's like when you're under pressure to perform? You just can't do it. It's all right, buddy. We'll get we'll get through this somehow. The city is going to be destroyed because you don't perform well under pressure. Luton, you're not helping. I don't believe this. I know that the jewel is called the Radiant Trapezohedron. Doesn't that count for something? Mm, no. Not really. Stick to the matter in hand. If you don't give me this jewel soon, the whole city, the whole of creation, for all I know, is going to be destroyed by Nylon Athatep. Do you want that? Of course not. Well, then just give me the jewel. Well? Well, I need proof that this entity is the threat that you say it is. What, do you need a tentacle of his? I mean, there's entities, and there's entities. Tell me, what were you before you became a knight? A civil servant of some sort, maybe? I was a tax collector. Of course! How did you know? Just a hunch. What do you know about the goddess Errata? How come this sarcophagus wasn't protected by an elver sign? I didn't know how. I could show you. Oh. Would you? Sure. For the jewel. But if I give you the jewel, I don't need to protect the sarcophagus anymore. And doesn't that sound good? I'd like to discharge my duties properly first. Then ask me the damn riddle. Um... Uh, no, uh... Sorry. Uh, I still can't remember it. Hmm. We're gonna we're, we're gonna crack him at some point. I'm just going through these uh, conversation topics just to see what he has to say because it's fun. How about if I just tell you something about the jewel? Wouldn't that prove that I deserve it? Go on. Well, I know it's gold plated and that it says Unquam Paratus on it. <sighs> Anyone could have found that out. But no. <laughs> no! I figured after 400 years in here, they wouldn't know too many people who were born this century. All right, let's start to asking him about stuff from our inventory. <laughs> like, <laughs> let's ask him for money. Stick to the matter in hand. I'll stick to the matter at hand. List, flyer, amulet? I didn't think I could win the zombie over by showing him the amulet. He'd probably assume I was a worshipper of Nylon Athatep. That's actually true, so best not show him that. Look, I have the Golden Felchion. Surely that counts for something. Oh, I knew you had the sword, but that's no help. If you're on the side of darkness, and you have the falchion, then I definitely can't give you the jewel. How did you know I had the sword? I saw you coming in the jewel. Really? Did you see anything else? Like the fact that I'm on the side of good? Oh. I've been watching the progress of the sword since I got here. So you have the proof. You know that I'm going to do good. 
In which case, you must have seen Mundy hide the sword in the crate and me recover it from Vault 51. Yes, I did. At least he got some uh, sort of TV while waiting. So, you saw me killed by Anu Anu. Oh, yeah. That big dog creature. How did you survive that, by the way? Carlotta had turned me into a werewolf. I thought it might be something like that. They never give you the whole story with those cliffhanger endings. I remember two hundred years ago when I saw someone go off the cliff in a cart. Only it turned out he actually leapt clear at the last minute. I call that cheating. Anyway, did you see when Anu Anu summoned Nylon Athatep? Oh, I see. That's what the big cosmic horror was then. Yes, that was the big cosmic horror. What did you think it was? Well, I thought it might just have been fog. Yeah, fog with tentacles. The reception in here isn't very good. If you saw all that, you must know that I'm not with the forces of darkness. Hang on. You were there when this cosmic horror was summoned? I was tied up. Uh, yes. Then why didn't you stop it? I was being restrained. Come on, just give me the jewel. Give it. No can do. You saw me defeat Satrap, wasn't that enough? Didn't you hear what he said? No sound with the jewel, I'm afraid. Oh, what the hell? It was just a visual, no, no sound. That's crap. You just get pictures. Do you know what's most ridiculous about this? If I was with the Dark Sect, I'd just use the sword to kill you and then just run off with the jewel. Or cut you in still sort of alive little pieces. <sighs> you know... That's a good point. That's a very good point. <laughs> yeah. So I'll tell you what I'll do. Either give me the jewel freely, or I'll pretend I'm with the dark sects and I'll just take it. You're not leaving me many options. Jewel, please. Here you go. Finally. Thank you. Thanks, mate. And uh, sorry about the arm. And may I say, I hope the next 400 years just fly by. Do -do -do -do. The guardian of the radiant trapezohedron had been in the crypt for centuries. That was a degree of dedication to work which I couldn't quite comprehend. Well, um, it's been nice, but I have a world to save. Horst. Of course. And he has Ilsa. I was wondering where you had got to. But then we have been engaged in similar pastimes. Luton. Ilsa. As you can see, I have been forced to take more drastic action. I dislike having to take such radical steps, but since the untimely demise of Mr. Alkali, I no longer have the luxury of observing events from afar. Let her go, Horst. Let her go, Mr. Luton? You make it sound as if she is my prisoner. I am merely keeping her well protected against the more hostile elements of this wretched settlement. Let her go. That is precisely my intention, Mr. Luton. But first, you must fulfill your agreement with me. You want the sword. Indeed. You agreed to bring me the sword, and I am here to collect. No deal, Horst. I need the sword to stop Nylon Athatep. Indeed. And what might that be, sir? The huge cloud with tentacles? It's a creature from the Dungeon Dimensions, and it's loose in Ankh Morpork. That's as maybe. It still doesn't change our agreement. So you're gonna get the sword, but die shortly after. You promised me the sword, sir, and I am here to collect. If I give you the sword, thousands will die. I believe more than that. Oh, come now. The world is full of people. 
There will be no more world. What are the lives of those insignificant specks compared to our own desires? We, sir, are breed apart from most people. We see what we want, and we take it. If a few tiny lights have to be extinguished to achieve our goals, then that is unfortunate. But it is of little consequence. We're not talking about a few lights. We're talking about a few thousand lights. Maybe hundreds of thousands. Then we will have to learn to live in the dark. I can't do it, Horst. Oh dear. I thought you were a man of your word, sir, but it seems I was mistaken. Very well. Then I am forced to take more drastic action. I don't know how much pressure it would take from my fingers to suffocate the young lady here. And I'm not entirely sure that I wouldn't apply slightly too much pressure and snap her spine. However, you have forced me to experiment. Gluten! Oh. <coughs> All right, Horst. You win. Let her go. Excellent. I thought you were a man of reason, sir, and I was right. I admire a man who is not so stubborn as to throw away what he values just for his stubborn pride. You've got what you wanted, now let her go! I took Ilsa back to my office. What other choice did I have? I felt so stupid giving Horst the sword and staying with Ilsa as the troll disappeared into the night's fog. But even if I'd tried to follow him, the dark magenta stench of Nylonathotep drowned out every other scent in the city. There was nothing I could do. After we'd both calmed down, I told her everything that had happened. So Satrap was looking for two Conker's jewel. That jewel is known as the Radiant Trapezohedron. And I think it can save the city, but I have a nasty suspicion that we need this sword as well. Yeah, it's kind of a, a two-item deal. The Radiant Trapezohedron. Yes, it never occurred to me that they would be the same. The descriptions of the Trapezohedron are vague at best. Satrap must have been trying to imminentize the Gorunan Eshaton. Can you try that again without sneezing? <laughs> <laughs> the Gorun and Eshaton is one of the many myths concerning the end of the Discworld. It's very obscure. What's it about? It tells how some of the entities from the Dungeon Dimensions have been trapped around the Discworld. Some in the lost city of Leshp, some in the heart of the Garuna Trench, some in places men don't even have names for. When the Eshaton occurs, they are supposed to be released from their captivity and destroy everything they can get their tentacles on. The usual thing. Well, Nylonathotep is loose. Maybe this is it. Maybe this is the end of everything. Maybe it's a good time to borrow lots of money. Luton, I... I heard you'd been killed. I saw your grave. I heal quickly. I left a letter by your graveside. I know. I saw it. I wrote it when I had to leave you all those years ago, but I never had the courage to send it to you. I didn't know how to tell you that I was married. To two conquerors? Yes. He needs me, Luton. He always did. And in a strange way, I need him too. He gave my life meaning. I had nothing before I met him. None of that matters anymore. You never told me how you felt. What's to tell? I was born when you kissed me, and I died when you left me. I lived a few weeks while you loved me. Of course, I also died when I got stabbed in the back, but you know, that wasn't nearly as painful. I'm sorry. I bet you never thought of me as a man who could fall in love. I never thought about you at all. I couldn't. If I had, it would have driven me mad. I thought about you every day, until I'd drunk enough to forget. I let my life slide till there was nothing left to live for but bitterness. Well, all that's going to change. I'm going to save this city if I have to die again to do it. And I'm not going to do it for you, or for me, or for the worthless people who live in it. 
I'm going to do it to prove for once and for all that I'm not the washed up loser everyone thinks I am. And if it turns out that I am, then everything will get destroyed and no one will know about it. So hey, from where I stand, there's no downside. There really isn't. What are you going to do? First of all, we have to find Horst. And we know how. How? I have no idea. No, I have an idea. Don't worry about it. Remember the zombie said that he would see in the gem whoever had the falchion. So we're probably going to see Horst. For an artifact of near unlimited power, the trapezahedron was surprisingly unimpressive. For an artifact... I peered deeply into the trapezahedron and I could see an image of Horst with the golden sword. It looked like he was at the Maudlin Bridge. Cool. We're, go we're gonna hunt down Horst. I'm coming for you. You know, I wonder if uh, Nobby and the uh, Watch have any interest in what's gonna, gonna happen. You're not going to believe this, but I have to tell you anyway. There's a cult at work in the city, and if we don't stop them, they're going to destroy the city at the very least, and probably a lot more beside. Frankly, I don't know who else to turn to, and I thought... You're right. That I can get you on my side? That he doesn't believe me. Nah, that I'm not going to believe it. I'm sorry, Luton. Coming back from the grave is one thing. I mean, we all know that it happens all the time, don't we? But cults plotting to destroy the city. Nah, sorry. You just pull him a leg. We'd know about it. And now you do. I've just told you. Really? Got any evidence? How about the huge monster with tentacles that will literally pull your leg? Anyway. I took a few precautions and then headed down to the Maudlin Bridge to check it out. The image in the trapezohedron turned out to be right. Horst was at the Maudlin Bridge. And he wasn't alone. He and our mutual acquaintance seem to be in some sort of dispute. I wonder what happened to Laredo. What happened to our agreement, Horst? We were supposed to be working together. Really, madam? Then why was it that you arranged for Mundy to sell the sword to you and you alone? Just because I didn't trust al Kali as a courier didn't mean I broke the agreement. And I suppose you're going to deny that you were involved in his death? I couldn't stop his death. But that doesn't mean I caused it. Doesn't it? What about you? It was you who set Malachite after me, wasn't it? I thought you might appreciate being reunited with your estranged brother. You sent him after me to try and slow me down. You are the betrayer among us, madam. Don't try and substitute me as the villain of the piece. Yes, I freed Malakat, and yes, I used him to slow down you and Mr. Luton. But you were the one who arranged his death. I didn't arrange his death. He was just in the wrong place at the wrong time. And you put him there. I'm not here to debate the details with you, Horst. Why are you here? Give me the sword. After all, I've risked to get hold of it. No. As soon as my launch arrives, I will be taking the sword away from this God's forsaken city. If you want, you can have a small share of the profits. I am not ungrateful for your assistance in this endeavor, but that is all I am prepared to offer. Why, you miserable excuse for a troll! Oh, come now. I could snap your neck like a twig if I wanted to, but I'm not going to, because there's nothing to be gained from doing it. Listen, Horst. Either give me the sword, or kill me. Because one way or another, I won't allow you to leave town with the sword. As you wish. I didn't think of myself as a murderer. But I wasn't about to stand by and watch Horst try to kill Carlotta. Of course not. Save Carlotta. It was over in a flash. That was comically easy. <laughs> I don't even know how it happened. He's better off dead. He's dead? Well, he fell in the river, yeah. Is that all you can say about him? He probably cracked his skull while landing in the river. He was some kind of a troll. What does it matter what you say about trolls? What now? We have to get out of the city. Can't we stop it? It's too late for that. Right now, Nylonathotep is opening a portal to the dungeon dimensions above the city. 
When it grows large enough, everything will be destroyed. Great. Let's go into the portal. I have the trapezohedron. Doesn't that help? It means Nylonathotep won't be powerful enough to destroy more than just the Circle C. And if we leave now, we can get away before the worst of the destruction. I'm not leaving the city. It's my home. It's not much of a home, but it's all I've got. You've got me, Luton. Come with me. I'll renounce the cult, and we can run free in the hills of Uberwald. It's not that I don't have feelings for you, Carlotta. I do. It's just that I don't trust you. You murdered your own brother. You'd have killed me if I'd got in the way. So what? So I'm no good. I'm no worse than anybody else. Think about it, Luton. You. Me. The wide-open spaces of Uberwald. Or you can stay here and die with the rest of the rabble. Don't be a fool, Luton. Join me. I can't. I'm sorry, Carlotta, but there's only one way this can end. Me entering a portal with a pointy stick. You're turning me over to the watch? Oh, <laughs> even better. I'd like to be able to run away with you, turn my back on the city, and just escape it all. But face it, Carlotta, I'd be dead in a week. Thanks for coming, Nobby. Hey, what are friends for? Mrs. Carlotta von Uberwald? I'm arresting you for conspiracy, accessory to murder, attempted herbicide, and for being bloody stupid. Bloody stupid. You don't have to say anything. But if you say not guilty, we're liable to kill ourselves laughing. <laughs> Bring it on, Nobby. Oh, you'll regret this, Luton. Nothing's going to save you now. The only way to stop the destruction of the city would be to take the Falchion into the portal. And I hope you try. As he left, Vimes fixed me in his eyes, as if to say that this didn't make up for what I did all those years ago. Oh, let it go, Vimes. But I didn't care about that. This wasn't about the past. It was about the future. I looked down at the hulking corpse of Jasper Horst in the river mud, and I wondered if I'd done the right thing. But life's too short for regrets. And if I didn't stop Nylon Athatep soon, it would be too short for a shot of whiskey. And that wasn't any sort of life I wanted. Somehow, I had to get the Felchian into the portal before it was too late. And again, I have an idea, because it's going to be probably above the city. Time was short. Time was short. I had to reach that portal somehow. The question was, how? We're going to fly there. Two conquerors. Give me that flappy wing device. The contraption that Leonard and two conquerors had been working on was my only chance. Well, it's finished. Great. Now all we have to do is fly it. No problem. And I'm volunteering. Ah, hello again. Hello. You want to be the person in the seat that guides the device? Yes, I want to be the person in the seat that guides. I'm going to have to be. We still need somewhere long and flat to launch it from. Uh, here is fine. I'll see what I can do. There wasn't much point talking to Leonard or two conkers until I'd sorted out somewhere to launch the contraption from. Uh, well, the, the gap is wide enough. Isn't it? It's, oh, rubble. Oh, no. Our plan is thwarted by rocks. There was debris scattered all over the roof. It didn't take me long to get the roof clear of rubble. Plan's back on. I hope there was no one down below when it hit the ground. Well, we should have thought about that <laughs> before doing it, but... Oh well. Okay, can we fly now? I've cleared the rubble off the roof. Can we launch this from there? It might just work. It might just work. Give me a hand moving it out there and we'll see what happens. It's okay, I've died before. Flapping wing, flapping wing flying device. <laughs> the device was ready to fly. All I had to do was pluck up enough courage to do it. Oh, and you need a lot. 
Seconds before I could launch, Ilsa came flying down the rooftop. Wait! What are you doing here? How did you find me? Luton, you can see this device from halfway across the city. All you have to do is look up. Why did you stop me? You're going to try and stop Nylonathotep in this? Yeah. It's all I've got. Carlotta said if I took the sword into the portal, I could stop it. You can't go up against a creature from the dungeon dimensions without some sort of protection. Protection? Like what? I don't know. But you need something. All right. I'll see what I can do. All right. So I need some sort of protection, but nobody knows what it is. Uh... I'm a werewolf? Maybe I should combine this with the sword. The trapezohedron fitted into the pommel perfectly, but I wanted to wait until the right moment to do it. Oh, okay. So I don't have to do it now. But what kind of protection, Ilsa? Don't just come in here with the vague ideas. Well, the only protection thing that I can think of is that sign that we had. The Elver sign. Can I put it on the flapping wing device? I can! And now I'm protected! I inscribed the sign of the eel on the side of the flapping wing flying device. I hoped it was enough protection. It feels like a thin piece of cotton have, has been put on the device. Very thin. I have done all I could. This is it, Ilsa. I have my protection. Wish me luck. This is crazy, Luton. It's suicide. I know. But I have to do it. I'm the only one who can. I'm the only one who wants to. Now, wish me luck. I slotted the trapezohedron into the sword and steered the flying machine towards the portal, pedaling as fast as my tired little legs could manage. I kept flying onwards, the sky full of flame and thunder. It was a million to one chance that I could land it safely, but on the disc world, million to one chances happen nine times out of ten. Nice landing, Luton. Who do you think you are? My guardian angel? Is that... is that the dog? Oh, I lost my wings a long time ago. I can see I'm going to have to get used to finding you where I least expect. Is that Gaspode? Yeah. <laughs> Sounds about right. My original launch had attracted a lot of attention. I'd saved the city, but that didn't change things with Remora. Oh shit, yeah. If I didn't get out of the city, there was no telling what he'd do to me. Two conquers, get the flapping wing flying device ready. It's going on another flight. Oh, as you are wishing. Where are you going? I'm not going anywhere, but you are. The Assassin's Guild still has a contract out on your husband's head, and they won't stop until he's dead. Let him go. I'll stay here with you. I can't offer you much of a life, but he can. I love you, Luton. Yeah, I know. But love isn't always enough. If you don't get on that flying machine, you'll regret it. Maybe not today. Maybe not tomorrow. But soon. And for the rest of your life. Which won't be very long if the Assassin's Guild catches you. What about us? We'll always have the Hotel Pseudopolis. 
We didn't for a while. We lost it. But we got it back. And no one can take that away from us. Here's looking at you, Ilsa. Well, it's over. I don't know. It doesn't make much sense to me. You really loved her, didn't you? Well, don't ask me either. I mean, I'm a species that thinks someone's leg is an object of desire. Thanks, Gaspar. You know, this could be the beginning of a beautiful friendship. Don't push your luck, sonny boy. Well, I don't know why the dialogue sped up at the end, but that was Discworld Noir. I am so, 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 so happy I chose to play this. They just don't make games like this anymore, do they? So sarcastic and sassy and beautiful. Even though the graphics were pretty outdated, you really don't feel it. It was just beautifully made. I highly recommend you guys try out Discworld 1 and 2. They're pretty much just as sassy. But this was the one that I had never played. So I really wanted to do it. Thank you so much for watching this playthrough, and I'll see you in the next game. Enjoy the smooth jazz.